Greetings all, Shane Bruce, Rust to Mod Daisy, and today we've got a video that's uh, generated from some uh, message traffic from one of our subscribers. He's got a uh, newer Red Rider. Uh, he's fabricated his own sliding spring block and uh, spacer assembly and installed a high power spring, and lo and behold, the back plate blew off his plunger. Uh, it's not the first time I've heard of that happening, but it's the first documented evidence I've seen that it did occur. So we're gonna take a look at that. You can see the back plate's blown off and we're gonna go address how you can fix that. Heading over to the bench now. Well, now we're at the bench and uh, we're gonna lay out some information for you and let you guys make up your own minds about if this is something you need to do or not. Uh, the plunger assembly that we're talking about is the current production plunger assembly. You typically know it's that because it's black in color. It has a angle plate here and the uh, if you get at it on a straight angle, you'll notice the back plate is at about a 15 degree angle. That's to accommodate the needs of the plastic trigger assemblies that Daisy installed in these guns after 1978 or so. Uh, earlier guns in that would use a metal trigger and had a back plate that looks like this. You'll notice that it's a straight back plate. There's no flange. There's, uh, there's no swirled cuts. It's uh, just pretty much a straight up square end of a plunger assembly. So that's pre-78, probably pre-58. Uh, anyway, but in the current production back plate, you'll notice some other differences in the two styles. Matter of fact, we've got, oh, three styles here for our perusal. You'll notice that the current production back plate has one pin, and that extends through both sides, and you'll notice that it's not very large. It only goes out a little bit, but it doesn't have to go out a long way. It's basically staked in place. On the earlier version of the same product, you'll notice that there's two staked positions. They've got two pieces of steel extending through the side of the plunger assembly, and they're pretty aggressively staked. Uh, in the transitional model, you'll notice that it's, it's been dropped. It has the, the guide plate now, and it also has one uh, stake plate coming out either side. Now, this is where it gets interesting. If you start measuring steel on this plunger, the current production plunger, you'll see that the plunger itself, the plate, is about 0.097. All right, the stake point, this is where they've actually peened the side of the plate, is about 11.4. That's not a whole lot of meat uh, because it has to hold the rear plate on the back of the plunger. About a little less than 11.4 there, about 10.1. So that's a fairly thin stake. Uh, when we compare it to an earlier product, we'll see that the plate is uh, about the same in terms of thickness, but the stake point is now moved out to about 0.146, which is quite a bit wider than the original material that was used to make the stake. And you can also see from the way that this plate was staked, it was probably done with a machine that acted like this and it came down on the plate and mashed split the plate and spread it out so it can't pop out the sides which is what our uh, user's problem was because his plate basically just popped out the side and went away which kind of ruined the gun for a bit now uh, I've gone through let's back out and take a look at this big wad of uh, plunger tubes here there's 23 of the new style plunger tubes and these are uh, complete tube assemblies that originally looked like this that I've bought from Daisy and taken apart to get parts for uh, other guns. Uh, basically pins, uh, washers, compression cups, air tubes, all of that gets cannibalized uh, as I restore other Daisies that don't need a uh, plunger assembly. Uh, and the way Daisy sells parts, eh, you can buy the whole tube here fairly inexpensively and get a whole bunch of parts off of it. As a result, me, I, have plenty of these uh, accessory tubes that I'm going to figure out something to do with at some point in time. But right now, for today, they'll serve the purpose of showing you how you can take your stock plunger assembly with the stock stake. You'll notice there are small indentations on there. So it has been hit one time, probably in the manufacturing process, in an attempt to stake this in place. And turn that into something that looks like this, where you've got a much more aggressive stake on both sides. And this is done with physical manipulation by the utilization of a hammer, ball peen hammer. I'm talking hitting it. We're gonna knock that plate out of whack so that it won't pop off the back. So here we have a sample plate. This was selected from my 
inventory uh, because it has pretty good metal on one side. You can actually see that standing up pretty well. But on this side, it's kind of thin. So that this plate might have an issue with doing what the uh, uh, subscriber's plate has already done to him. So what we're going to do to attempt to fix this or prevent this from breaking is we're going to line it up in a uh, quick jig. You have this flange here on the side. You don't want to get that bent. That has to stay out so it'll ride over the glide and guide the uh, plunger true. So what you have to do is develop yourself a plate. And I happen to have a piece of quarter inch stock that had a hole drilled in it. So you have a flat mounting surface. The objective here is to get this piece of steel lined up underneath. And what we're going to do is we are going to peen it. Peening is a process where you make repetitive strikes on a piece of metal with the idea of deforming that metal. Uh, um, we've done peening before on another project video with the, we did with uh, how to install a uh, new Latigo loop on an old style Red Rider that might have it missing. It's the same basic technique. You just uh, raise the hammer up and strike the plate. Now you have to try to hit it where you're aiming at because if you hit the plate on either side of the target, you're not going to expand or deform the metal of the target. So what we're trying to do here is by wear and tear, peeing that plate out so it's a little fatter, so it hangs on to its job a little better and doesn't allow the plate to fly. Now you can see by repeating strikes that we're starting to uh, change the nature of the surface of the cross plate. It takes a while. It's not something you're going to do with two or three little taps. You're going to have to work that steel. Because it is steel, it's Chineseium of some type, but it is steel. So what we're looking to do is expand its apparent diameter by a considerable margin over the 10 or so it was, 0 0.10, 0.11, whatever it was. We want it wider in that hole so that it hangs onto the hole better. So we're going to take a look at that now with our mic and our plate, the material was formed on is about 10.5. As a result of beating on it with a hammer, we've now run this up to about 12.2. So that's a significantly wider than it was. So now what we're going to do is we're going to flip it over. We're going to go to the other side of the plate. And we're going to try the same thing. Now on this side, we have a lot more height. So we should have an easier time of seeing the effects of our painting activity. And you can see the metal starting to brighten up as it deforms and occupies more of that hole and gets a much better grip on the slot that it's in than it had when we started. Okay, so we stopped banging on it for a while. Let's check our thickness. Once again, our, our donor plate started at about nine, nine, ten, in the tens. But now, our plate that we've hit with a hammer repeatedly is giving us a 11.5. So, we've widened that out. We may have to bend those ears back a bit, but I don't think it really matters for function. The bottom line is that the plate should be a little snugger in the plunger tube now, and it shouldn't have the uh, issue of popping off the back of the unit. And that can be a real problem. So, that's all we've got for you today, kids. Uh, this is Shane Bruce with Rest of My Daisy, signing off.